Our big story tonight is out of Colorado, where a grand jury indicted three police officers and two paramedics in the death of Elijah McClain. The incident happened two years ago. Elijah was walking home from the store around 10.30 p.m., carrying a bad bag of iced tea when he was stopped by three Aurora police officers responding to a 911 call about a suspicious person. Keep in mind, Elijah was unarmed and hadn't been suspected of committing any crime. Officers pulled the 23-year-old to the ground and forced him into a chokehold for almost 20 minutes. During that time, Elijah repeatedly said he couldn't breathe and cried out for help. Officers then called paramedics who injected Elijah with the drug ketamine. After five minutes, he stopped breathing and was taken to the hospital where he was later declared brain dead and taken off life support. His last words were, quote, I'm just different, that's all. With me tonight is McLean family attorney Iris, I'm sorry, Halpern. Uh, thank you for coming on tonight, Counselor. Thank you so much for having us. Now, Iris, um, Elijah's mother was supposed to be with us tonight, but understandably so. She needed to, to basically catch her breath and, and be with her family. Can you tell us how they're doing in the wake of the news? I can. So, uh, Shanine McLean and her children are very overwhelmed, but extremely grateful and thankful to the Attorney General here, Phil Weiser, and his team for all the work that they have done to get to this moment. Uh, as some of your um, audience might know, there's a series of obstacles that were put in Ms. McLean's way uh, after the death of her son, Elijah. You know, the district attorney didn't prosecute, the chief of police said nothing uh, was wrong uh, and that the officers had done no wrong when they murdered Elijah. And so it's been a very long two years of uh, attempting to seek justice uh, for Elijah and they've never let up. Uh, Ms. McLean has always struggled to make sure that everyone has uh, been aware and uh, had knowledge of the of her son and what a, a great young man he was and the humanity and the dignity um, and uh, the innocence um, that, uh, that uh, were Elijah McLean. And she just had to keep battling. And so she's thankful to the attorney general. She's also extremely thankful to all of the members of the grand jury. I mean, they've been convening for months, uh, looking at the evidence uh, and um, getting through to the truth, to the bottom of the truth, um, after kind of all of the cover up that had happened in the past. Now, Iris, it's been two years since Elijah's death. And since then, like you said, it's been an ongoing fight to get to this point. Uh, the attorney general wasn't even appointed a special prosecutor until after it was made clear that the local DA wasn't going to charge these officers. So given how these kinds of cases usually play out, were you surprised that the grand jury came back with indictments for not just these three officers, but also the paramedics? Sure. Well, I think we're both surprised and not surprised, right? I mean, everyone knew that Elijah was innocent. Anyone looking at the video footage from that night, his uh, mother, Shania, has always maintained um, his innocence and that he was murdered. Um, and so, you know, once that information got to the members of the grand jury, uh, Oh, sorry, uh, the video was playing at the same time. So so once that evidence got before the grand jury, we had to have some faith that the jurors, the grand jury uh, members would do the right thing. We are, of course, surprised because there's been a history of uh, political failures, a lack of political will to actually prosecute officers when they engage in excessive force and um, murder similar to those that you uh, um, have seen uh, in the past. Um, so this has been happening for decades and it's only very recently that any indictments have really tended to happen, uh, uh, particularly when the victims were young black men. And so that, uh, you know, it's I think amazing in itself that there's starting to be a sea change there and that there's some accountability starting to, uh, t starting to um, uh, enter into, f into, into play here. Um, and also the paramedics, I think that is also a very unique angle to this case, right? Um, you know, uh, they have medical training, they have their own unique obligation in, to do to make a medical assessment and not just to take orders. Um, and they injected him when there was no reason to do that. Uh, and so I think, um, you know, holding all five of them accountable is really important because there's a lot of different uh, individuals playing different roles in the death of Elijah McClain. Uh, and uh, every piece of that murder has to uh, be accounted for. 
Now, the officers and paramedics, um, they've been indicted with manslaughter, criminally negligent homicide, and other assault charges. Do you think that the charges go far enough? Um, I know that the um, that Ms. McLean is very grateful um, that these charges have taken place. That's kind of been her primary goal is to make sure that those individuals who have um, who killed her son were held accountable. Obviously, uh, this is just kind of the announcement. It is just charges. Now it's going to be up to uh, the jury, a real jury, to sit through all this evidence publicly. Um, not behind closed doors and come to the correct conclusion. And so um, while there's many challenges ahead, and this is only part of the battle, I do think it's one small sliver of justice, but there's still a lot more that needs to be done. And Ms. McLean will not um, rest until uh, um, the officers and paramedics who uh, murdered her son are behind bars. Now, the Federal Department of Justice, Iris, um, they're also looking into Elijah's death. Do you expect charges in that investigation as well? Well, they're looking at, a, uh, so the state attorney general, I think this is what you're referring to, is um, doing an investigation into a pattern and practice of uh, discriminatory excessive use of force here in Colorado. And there's going to, um, you know, uh, and I think there's going to be some announcements to that effect and uh, Attorney General Weiser uh, kind of referenced that earlier today during um, uh, his announcement to the press, uh, you know, disclosing the 32 chart, two, 32 count indictment. Um, and so they are going to be looking more systemically at the type of violence that has occurred uh, and seems to be a pattern at the Aurora, in the Aurora police force. And I do think there's going to be some good of that that will come, consent decree, et cetera, that will make sure that they're being monitored, changing their policies, um, and that. Uh, the kind of, um, you know, uh, force that's been used against the community, oftentimes discriminatorily, uh, cannot continue in that town. Now, Elijah's um, death was the force uh, behind calls made for radical police reform legislation in Colorado. With the new police chief and that DOJ investigation into the police department, Iris, are you hopeful that real change can happen? Um, I'm always hopeful. I do think that the new police chief is trying and doing the best with what she can, but there is a bigger, um, there were more systemic operations um, in place that were really allowing uh, force, excessive force to be, um, to, 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 um, uh, to kind of, uh, you know, foster a culture that really fostered it. And there was really no accountability um, and it was baked into every level of policing in Aurora and in other parts of the state and country. Um, so I do think there are individuals who are making uh, sincere efforts to try to attack that, including the new ch police chief, in including the attorney general, et cetera. And so you have to be hopeful in that case. They're at least not um, you know, trying to hide uh, kind of the this abuse under the rug to really try to hold accountable bad apples on the police force. Um, but there has to be a lot more change as well. So Colorado has been at the forefront in passing legislation in the past uh, you know, two years to, to um, kind of skit, uh, to, to enact uh, accountability, uh, uh, police accountability. They've scaled back qualified immu immunity, uh, limited the use of ketamine, et cetera. Um, but there's still a lot of work that needs to be done until we understand that there's structural uh, operations in place and structural uh, systems in place that are creating conditions where violence um, can flourish until we address those larger systemic issues. Uh, true change can't happen, but I'm certainly hopeful that it will happen.